When the Traveler first arrived, it brought both power and light. Cities that were abandoned suddenly sprung to life. Space programs that were targeting close-range missions were now able to visit Mars to visit Jovian moons beyond the asteroid belt. Now you get the idea, the Golden Age was the best thing to ever happen to humanity, but after the collapse, that all quickly changed and everything went to crap. Although things were rough during this time, a new power emerged with the risen light of the Traveler, what would eventually turn out to be the Guardians of Hope. But before that spark of hope, these were known as the Risen and the Warlords, those who roamed the Earth after being brought back to life by the Traveler and did not yet know their cause. This was when corruption and brutality spread throughout various settlements, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. In the years after the collapse, the world had no guardians. It had only Iron Lords. Immortal, fearless, we fought to protect the survivors of a once great age. Our battle was about more than crawling back from the shadows. The Iron Lords would give humanity back its future. The Iron Lords are gone, but our fight is far from over. The Risen were the first Guardians revived by the Traveler. At this moment, times were very dark and these Risen Warlords began taking over territory and protecting certain settlements, expecting rewards and honor. If these people living here did not serve them, did not appreciate them, they would punish those who lived in the area and possibly even kill some of them. Now besides sort of governing certain areas and settlements, the Risen also fought amongst each other for this territory, power, and land control. If you've been around since the Black Armory DLC released, we know that the first Risen were the ones who attacked Henriette, who was Ada's mother, when she was trekking through the wild. We learned back then that their Black Armory bunker came under attack by the darkness and they were forced to push out into the wilderness and find a new place to go so they could survive in peace. Along the way, some frightening beings which remind us of Guardians would attack them and try to take some of their stuff. Here's that card. While the Exo practiced using her ability, we were ambushed by... I don't even know what they were. They were definitely not regular humans. They had abilities. The rest of us don't. We took one down, we thought, but then his little red drone lit up and he was on his feet again. We kept firing. They didn't expect to run into an armory on foot, so they ran, but not before killing some of us and wounding Yuki. She promises I'm still stuck with her, though. I'd be lost without her. So that was the first time the Risen attacked Henriette and her group with Ada-1 while they're in the wilds trying to find a new place to go. We see it describes they were definitely not regular humans, they had abilities, and when they tried to kill them they did manage to do it, but then the little red drone lit up, which is I'm assuming the ghost, and brought them back to life. So if you haven't read that story, I definitely recommend you watch some of my videos on that, and this was just the first encounter with this group, and they kept coming back and trying to track down Ada-1 because they wanted her abilities. So this is a prime example of how brutal these first Risen and Warlords were. They didn't really care for anyone or anything like the Guardians would in the future, and they had their own agenda. From the Rezal Azir Before These Walls cards, we learn this. This was before the city was the city. This is before the walls, still in the shadow of the fragile giant above, but before. Salvation Seekers came, survivors, weary remnants of a people on the brink. These were the days before reason took hold, before study was merged with belief. The giant was looked to as one would a god, maybe it still is. Factions grew from the huddled masses, like minds coming together to provide support, comfort. Over time, these loyalties demanded loyalty. Differences that used to inform, viewpoints that when joined granted a larger understanding of the whole, became points of conflict. The sanctuary became divided, the shadow of light grew darker. This, humanity's last oasis slowly fading to a mirage. Great powerful men and women, the Risen, stood at the faction's sides. Protection, enforcers, misused possibility. Misery crept into this false paradise, yet hope lingered. 
Seeing the cracks in the society born beneath a giant's fractured shell, some among the Risen challenged the dissolution of all that could be. They would no longer serve as instruments of oppression, they would be more. So this period of darkness, these dark times, all kind of changed with the installment of the Iron Lords. So a select group of some of these Risen and even some of the Warlords banded together to form the first Iron Lords. We then learned from Rise of Iron and a bunch of different lore cards that their goal from there on out was to sort of end these Warlords' reign in different territories and stop them from causing harm to civilians. After that first goal was done, they can focus on protecting the city and its people and trying to get those people to safety so they can live their lives as they would wish. We thought we were indestructible. The Lords of Iron. We swore we would do anything to protect the last city. Some of us paid the ultimate price. But there were also some warlords who didn't need to be killed because they converted their ways to the Iron Lords on their own and sided with the good of the light. Some of these notable examples include Felwinter, which we might talk about in a future video, and yes, even Lord Shax. Here's a new card on him from the season of the Drifter. Nah, Dark Age version was better. You and I remember the Dark Age differently. I'll take a hard projectile over energy any day. No better way to make sure the target is dead. Energy is for silencing barriers. Fists are all I need to administer blunt force trauma. I forget you used to be a warlord. What do you mean, used to? I thought you'd thrown in with Saladin and Felwinter. I did, but I never stopped being me. Then why? Warlord is too many syllables. Gambit needs more candidates like you. Should stop by sometime, whatever you want to call yourself. Thank you, you're a liar and a cheat. Stay out of my crucible. So that card is definitely pretty cool. It's from the new Arbalist weapon, which is coming out in the Revelry, uh, I believe this upcoming reset tomorrow, and it actually gives us confirmation that Shax was a warlord. We knew that he was alive during this time, risen, you know, became an iron lord as well, but this card gives us confirmation of his warlord status and his sort of little conversation with the Drifter here. But just how bad did some of these warlords get? Now let's talk about a couple of them, and first let's start with a guy named Seagoth. Seagoth was like any other warlord during this Dark Age. He had control over a village and did not like the formation of the Iron Lords as it went against his ideals and what he was trying to conquer. From the Lady Perun card in Destiny 1, we can see how this altercation went down. The Pike Rider's faces were now visible through the early morning gloom. A man in a long red robe pulled his pike ahead as they screeched to a halt. Well, well, said Seagoth, the Iron Wolves. Seize your insult, Saladin barked. Perun shot him a surprised look. That's an insult? I kinda like wolves. Be gone, wolves, Seagoth sneered. These people are mine. Wrong, Radagast resorted. You abuse the powers the Traveler has entrusted us. Seagoth smiled and shrugged. Shields up, Perun shouted. So this, as you can imagine, began a battle between the Iron Lords and the Warlord forces here. They would kill them many and many times, but they kept getting revived by their ghosts and eventually were pushed back to retreat back to their village because of this Iron Lord power. Now they did end up finally killing Seagoth and Warlocks in Destiny 1 can even acquire his head from an artifact. Next up we have Reens. Now this story is kind of cool because Reens took shelter in a crumbling castle and called it his own. Now for those of you that aren't aware, very early on in Destiny's development, it was a fantasy game. Not just sci-fi fantasy, but more just fantasy with castles, giant frogs, and things like that. So Reens took in this castle, built walls around it, put up defenses, and even recruited more warlords to join his cause along the way. As more of these people kept joining, the Iron Lords realized that something was going on here, and they intervened to take things down. So in summary, these warlords were pretty nasty. After the collapse, the Traveler used what it had left to create the Ghosts, which would in turn revive humans that would fight for the Light. But these first resurrected were much different and didn't know what to fight for. This made them turn to controlling land, fighting each other, and slaughtering any of those who stood in their way for no reason. The big turning point to note was when some of these Risen and even the Warlords joined together to create the first Iron Lords. 
From there, they would work together to overthrow these warlord demons who resided in the wild. And some of these former warlords can even be seen in stories today and even the tower like Lord Shax and Felwinter. With most, if not all of these warlords gone for now, we can say for sure that the city is much safer. That doesn't mean that there isn't warlords still out there, maybe on the other side of the planet or something like that. But a big chunk of humanity is definitely centered in the last safe city under the protection of our guardian. But Guardians, that's all I got for today's video. Tell me down below if you'd like to see some more mysteries with Felwinter and what his lie possibly was. And also if you'd like to learn more specific characters who were warlords or risen in the past that may have been sort of bad guys. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and like to see more mysteries just like it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I thank you very much for watching. My name's Evade, and I'll catch you Guardians in the next one.